We are here to recap the Players' Championship live. We are we are hopefully live on our YouTube page. Let me just apologize to all of our uh, loyal viewers, listeners out there. If there are technical difficulties, if there are, we'll, we'll do our best to resolve them. But this is this is fun. This is our first, I believe this is our first live stream since we were reacting to the Ryder Cup captain's picks by Zach Johnson. How, how do we feel about having the, the live juice a little bit here? Are we sure we're live? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm looking at this is this is we're, we're just pulling back the curtain for all this. I'm I'm looking at a, a screen that looks like we're live. So okay. uh, here here we're live. I got the chat up. People want to send in questions. How do I we'll how do I do that? It. How do I pull that up? Uh, okay, so here we go. Let's do some live production here. I, I'm gonna go to our YouTube page. This is great. It allows some people to kind of get in, populate this thing. I'm gonna go to our YouTube page. Is that what I need to do? Is go to my YouTube page? Yeah, sure. Go to your, go to our YouTube page. You should be able to find it there. I was just gonna try to pull the uh, the link from there, and then I'll uh, I'll share that link, and then oh, here we go. So here we go. I'm gonna reply to you, uh, and then this is great. Live production meetings to get this thing started. Uh, I'm gonna reply to you. We are live now. And then if you if you be so kind as to retweet that. <laughs> oh, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. I've been finding it on YouTube. Yeah, it's you know, it's we're learning. We're learning. <laughs> we're, we're we're hoping to do more of these in the future. And this is our first one that we're testing out. Uh okay. And, oh, here so, it is. Yep. Oh. I just I just reposted it. Oh, here we go. Now we're rocking and rolling. Uh all right. Well, I say that's a smashing start to our to the live stream. We got the links going, we got the chat going uh viewers trickling in you know at a at a, at a a steady pace we'll call it um but yeah you, I, hold on how do you open the chat up on the youtube so if are, do you have the youtube link open yeah okay so the sh chat should be at the bottom right whoa okay now see what i have is i have the youtube volume going at the same time now we got like a feedback loop here this is great this is really good stuff here. Wait, I think top chat. It, it, oh, I live think, chat. Yeah, do you see it? I think if you click the link and then you can like mute the clip, then you should be able to. Um, yeah, I've already yeah, done that. I think. You can see the chat on the right. Yeah, there you go. You got it now? I think so. Has anybody said anything? No one said anything yet. Okay. So we're good. But I, I, if I see something, I'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. Uh, that's good. That's that's a good. We kind of. It's like you know you you are in theater. You're warming up your singing voice. We got somebody our say something. Going. Oh look! Oh, let's chats up, gents. Evan says chats up, gents. And Brogan Baker says let's have a day. The chat okay. is up. Let's okay. rock and roll. Oh, Hello, Evan. I, Hello, I can't Brogan. See that yet though. Scotty the goat. I love Learn it. Learn more. It's. <laughs> Do you, are you not? How about this? I'll if if I read you the chat Show comments, chat. you can. Oh, here it is. It's up. You got, got it. it. Oh, okay. We are here. We are I love so, a good chat. <laughs> we are so live. I think chat is. Chat was actually the superstar of the Ryder Cup live picks reaction. I expect nothing <laughs> yeah, less. We got than nothing chat done. Today. We just ended up <laughs> on the chat thing the whole time, <laughs> which you know, some might say was a better show. Uh, so yeah. we'll uh, we'll we'll see how it goes today. But um, let's let's kind of let's get into it. I mean, uh, so obviously we're gonna get to Scotty. Um, you know, somebody on this podcast, I can't remember who said last week that. Uh, I don't know. This guy might win four starts in a row. So two down, two to go. Um, Did I say we'll, that? I, it wasn't you. It was somebody else. Who else is on this podcast? We'll have to figure that you one out. You said that? No, I, I was the one that said something along the lines <laughs> oh. that this guy could be the first guy to win, you know, have a chance at a grand slam since Jordan and Tiger. That was You did, you did say that. That was your quote. Which is, I, a, which is a, a deeper take than four in a row uh yes some would some would argue that you know they're they're equal takes if not you know <laughs> <laughs> no but you're one and done hit as well um yeah you you've that's had you have two winners two in, in three two. weeks <laughs> that's uh, yeah. pretty impressive dude like when you think about it uh you're only you're just slightly less than a thousand fedex cup points behind me but you got a lot of holy time crap dude that means i have to have back-to-back -back <laughs> winners oh my yeah. god I'm I mean, so I think, I mean, this, this was, to be fair, this was a more obvious pick Scotty was than Jake Knapp was. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, it, it, well, let's, let's get, let's just get right into it with the players. And like, we, I want to get back to Scotty, but I mean, I think that the place that you and I have talked like off camera, like about starting for this is just the week at large. 
This week felt so electric to me. Every single day had storylines. There were storylines leading into the tournament. We had storylines on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The finish was unreal. Uh, Brandel Chambly said on Live From, he says, the players doesn't look like Augusta, but it mirrors it in anticipation and in intimidation and excitement. I would say what we saw today is as close to the excitement that you get on the back nine of a great Masters as you will ever see. Mm -hmm. So let's just start there. Like, just... Your reaction to the atmosphere at the players this week, and I don't know, is it too cliche of a question to ask you where this ranks for you among the greatest tournaments in golf, including the majors? Oh, Scott, I mean, what a <laughs> what a hard hitting question, right from the get go. <laughs> that was the most exciting week I've ever worked in TV uh, to this point. Wow, uh, the one that it's been the closest, but there was nobody there was the century when John Rahm came from like four back on Colin Morikawa that. Uh, that was last year, two years ago, whatever it was. Yeah. So, yeah, man. I, I mean, just being with Scotty the last two days, you know, being with him on Saturday and Sunday. And <laughs> I mean, dude, it seriously on Saturday, I'm thinking like, ah, uh, you know, he he really could just withdraw at any point. You know, he's, he's he's when he's talking to me, walking down the fairway, he's doing this guy, you know, this. <laughs> It's like old Charlie neck brace. I was gonna say that as as a neck surgery guy, I, I know that game. You know the, the the full the full turn. Yeah, it was dude. It was so sick. I mean, he didn't like have the juice yesterday on Saturday when he was playing. Uh, like he didn't have like those full full shots that he normally mm -hmm. has, where he can hit something hard and way up in the air. And he was just kind of getting it around and got it up and down when he needed to. And he's, he's one under going into 16 and then he birdies the last three and he's like, Oh, he's five back. He's kind of got a chance. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought you, you talking about the neck a little bit. Uh, I saw his clip last night. Ted Scott said after the win, he told, he told his wife on Friday, he'd be surprised if Scotty played the weekend. Uh, you of course, and, and we have people in the chat, complimenting uh your your interview yesterday with scotty your winner's <laughs> interview on the which <laughs> i want to get to that i want to get to a nerves check on where you were for that interview because you, you found out very very close to that interview that you were going to be doing it uh but but you know you asked him and he said that was a good question about the neck and he just talked about being a competitive guy did, not wanting to give up um I, you know how much for you does it add to both this win, but also just the aura that's starting to really grow around Scotty to see him that hurt on the verge of pulling, pulling out of the tournament and, and still go out there and get the win on a Sunday at, at, you know, the fifth major. I mean, it's, it's just so impressive, right? I think you, you're really starting to see the respect that all the other players have for him as well. You know, they're all kind of speaking out to the media, calling him the best player in the world. I think for like all last year, I mean, how many times did we have the debate on, Who's the best player in the world? Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, or Scotty Scheffler? You know, how many times did we do that last year? Where this year, there's been no talks of that, right? We haven't seen John Rahm go head-to-head -head with Scotty yet, so it's been hard to compare and contrast. And, you know, with Rory, he's just been, you know, he got off to a good start over in Europe, played well in Dubai, finished runner-up, and 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 won the following week. But since then, he's, he's either been, like, the iron game's been off or the putter's been off. So... Dude, it's just, it's wild. I mean, 50 years, nobody's won it twice. Uh, I've been screaming and hollering from the rooftops to buy stock in this guy for however many yeah. years now with how impressive this guy is. Nobody has more control of their golf ball. I've never seen, I've never played with Tiger, but I imagine it's Tiger-esque as far as the control he has. Um, he hits the exact shot you want to hit every time. He's a robot. Um and if you haven't seen him play live, you need to go see it. It's it's that good. On the Tiger piece, he was asked about this in his post press conference, and this is this is what his answer was. I mean, they're just asking about just comparisons to Tiger, and he said, "I think that's a funny question. I'm not going to remember the exact numbers, but we're playing at Riv this year, and I hit my tee ball, and this guy yells out, "Congrats on being number one, Scotty! Eleven more years to go. Eleven more years to go. <laughs> Anytime you can be compared to Tiger, I think it's really special." But, I mean, the guy stands alone, I think, in our game. He really does. This is my eighth tournament win now out here. I've tied him in players' championships. Outside of that, I've got 14 more majors and 70-some PGA Tour events to catch up. So I think I'm going to stick to my routine, just continue to plot along, try to stay as even-keeled as I can. Um, <laughs> which, uh, which, some context, right? <laughs> it, 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 uh, it, 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 
it's so funny. This is like almost every Tiger stat. It's like a guy starts playing well, and you're like, man, I, you know, this is kind of feeling like we're approaching Tiger territory. And then you look at the stat, it's like, yeah. To his to his point here, the guy Rib, eleven more years to go until you catch him. Uh, so we're not, we're not saying we're we're there yet, but man, I mean, maybe a better way to phrase it is this: is that is that he's he's playing at a Tiger like his ball striking last year was tiger prime tiger levels and you know, obviously didn't have the putter coming and now we're kind of see that take taking some shape this year where do you put scotty maybe against the other greats in the past 10 years or so like your your dustin johnson's your rory mcelroy's your brooks kept because like what we've seen thus far from scotty still just the one major but starting to rack up a really impressive resume of wins and where do you have him right now in that group you know i think we we still need to watch him in the major championships mm. um in this form, I think, you know, this is kind of where Brooks started to pop off and, and go from one major to all of a sudden he's got three or four, you know, that's what can happen for Scotty here in the next two years. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, what do you set the over under at his majors this year? If it's any, I feel like one and a half is kind of right where you put it. You feel yeah. like he has to win one. Now, whether he wins two or whether he wins three, I feel like that's, totally a possibility but to your question just kind of like comparing them to guys in the last decade I mean dust it's you know Scotty's so I don't I wouldn't call him different but he's the he's the smartest golfer I've ever seen hmm. when it comes to controlling his golf ball like he doesn't make mistakes that's the thing that I see that he does better than anybody else like when I watch Rory and I watch uh, whether it's John Rom, like the, those guys will they'll, they'll make mistakes on shots. I, I'm telling you, I, I don't even have to watch Scotty and I can I can call shots without even seeing where the golf ball is. And, and all I can need to hear is the contact and be like, oh, this is going to be 10 feet right because that's where it's going to go. <laughs> it's it's I'm telling you, it ends up exactly where it's supposed to be just about every hole. And when he gets in trouble, it's like I get excited because. I'm like, ooh, he's never in trouble. Let's see if he knows how to get out. <laughs> and and then he hits it right where he's supposed to. Well, and, and explain that a little bit more just for people who, I mean, I think a lot of people really enjoy your insight on like how to play the game. You know, stuff you can take and obviously not play like Scotty Scheffler or even Smiley Kaufman. But what can I learn from this guy? So is it is it, you know, is it obviously he hits it where he's supposed to, but is it just like a calculation of if I hit it here and I miss, I'm still in a good position to score? Or like what stands out to you about when you're talking about him being the smartest player? What are what are the attributes there that you see come to life when you're following following him around in a tournament like like you just did the last few days? Oh, well, for instance, let's go to a shot that he hit at the hero. Um, it's like the twelfth hole, the par three. There's a little creek on the left side of the green. Pin was back left and wind is like in off the left it's like a 205 yard shot and the perfect shot is to hit it on a non-windy day a five yard draw um and have it land you know 10 feet right of it and the wind being in off the left so you got to kind of hook it into this wind and trust that you're not going to over hook it into the water and he hits a 10 yard hook into this wind hits it a little harder and hits it pin high 10 feet right you're just like and I watch all these other guys come through and, and, and nobody has the trust to be able to hit that shot. You might see a guy do it, you know, every now and then, but dude, he does it every time. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just, Crazy. he's never in, he's never in a, a slump when it comes to his ball striking. I, I haven't seen it yet where he's just visibly frustrated with how he's hitting the golf ball. Um, his frustration with his ball striking is, on such a smaller scale compared to everybody else when they're struggling like Rory right now who's you know really kind of working through some some stuff with his ball striking but he, he'll get it sorted out but with Scotty it's like when he's off it's like you wouldn't even be able to tell because he still shoots 68 and I think one of the coolest stats that he has is that he leads the the tour in the least amount of bogeys you know that's yeah. the stat that any tour player would want to have you know Making a ton of birdies is great. Um, is that sustainable year after year? Probably not. You know, you you kind of have to rely a little bit on your short game and uh, ball striking as well with that. But limiting bogeys is something mm. year after year if you're able to do and lead that that statistic with how well he hits it. It's like, how are you going to beat this guy if he doesn't make mistakes, right? 
you're just you're, you know you're gonna put up a score i mean i think there's a lot of guys like that that are you know scoring is the thing that it, it sounds so obvious but i mean that's the thing that impresses me the most in looking at tour pros who get it done jordan does it in a very different way where you're like he's all over the golf course and he comes in and he's like oh you know scrape together a 67 68 <laughs> how in the heck did he do that i think scotty is uh, you know, very different in terms of how he plays the game, but it's similar in the fact that like he just finds a way to yeah keep bogeys off the card and put himself in position to to make a lot of birdies. And you know, it's the tough part for him has been, you know, the putting being where it's been in the past. You know, it, 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 when he doesn't make those birdies, that's the thing we all point to and talk about. But he's but he's you know by definition keeping bogeys or doubles off the card. Um, I want to get to the chat here. I want to engage with our, our live viewers on our YouTube here. So we got a couple of, of questions on that topic. So Cameron Carter here says, Scotty switches to a mallet putter and, and wins twice. I was looking at the strokes gain stats, and I know, look, you know, they're they're flawed to a certain degree, but you know, it was it was definitely a more average performance this week than it was last week when when he had really, really good numbers. Um, and, and obviously, you know, it, that has something to do with his approach stats. You know, if he hits the ball better in approach, then, you know, the, the putting numbers are going to maybe suffer from a strokes game perspective. Uh, what did you, but obviously it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It wasn't like the, we're showing up here on a Monday morning being like, it happened again. We're watching the same movie again. What'd you see from him with the putter this week? I know he had some opportunities to make some birdies on that back nine coming down the stretch that he mm -hmm. missed, but he still made some big putts as well. What were your kind of takeaways from him? with that spider putter week two. I feel like he owes Rory a little <laughs> bit of cash for just the suggestion that he made to, to Scotty on air of CBS on uh, at Riv and listening to Scotty to kind of talk about the putter though. Um, and we went into depth about this, about the waste management Phoenix open when, you know, he really should have won that week or was at least been in a playoff with how well he played three putting twice on the back nine and then having a couple easy up and downs that he missed some short putts on. So talking to talking to Phil Kenyon and then listening to Scotty Scheffler talk um, in his post post round conference interview, whatever you call it, uh, last night when he was just talking about Phoenix Open, how how frustrated he was that he didn't get it done there and that there was a little bit of residue that that kind of spoiled over into into L.A., which which is not an easy place to putt. And I said, and, and you were sounding the alarms. I said, Scotty or Charlie, let's, 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 let's keep our self-talk positive with Scotty. This thing is going to turn around and then let's get him to see Bermuda. the mallet putter come out for <laughs> Bay Hill. And I was like, let's just get him to Bermuda. And I mean, it, it was, we had such a great weight report going into Sunday. And, oh. and what we didn't expect was Scotty just to run away with it and shoot uh, a 65 is that what he shot i think it was 65. 64 uh yeah it was 64 no yeah. not no this is at uh oh i'm sorry i'm sorry bay hill. yes 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 i think it was 65 bay hill yeah um well that's yeah. stupid <laughs> <laughs> that, if it wasn't 65 it was 66 something like that but yeah um yeah and and that was kind of what phil Kenyon uh talking with him at bay hill uh just about how frustrated he was not winning in phoenix but also what they were working on and that they felt positive that this this putter was going to be good for him and just mm. not having to use the line on the ball just rely on the line of the putter open up that creativity and kind of get yourself out of uh, out of what you're seeing on the ground with your stroke and kind of start visualizing with your eyes of what you see kind of create that feel and that's honestly what I saw out there the putts that he did miss I felt like were putts that were tricky you know, I thought yeah. the putt on 13, I thought the putt on 13, the little four foot downhill right to left. Mm -hmm. If I would have got, if they would have brought me in early enough, I would have said, if he starts this on the right edge and doesn't hit it hard enough, he's going to miss a left. That's what I was going to say. And it happened. And so I'm kicking the dirt. I'm so mad. I'm like, God, I had to call right. And then it, and then it happened. It's always nice when I, I have, I have a hall of fame resume of shots called in my head that never made it on air <laughs> <laughs> and that was going to be one of them I was like he's, he's going to miss this low <laughs> and uh and then he missed the putt on 15 uh which I thought was a really tricky read and gets up now on 16 17 huge like the wind was all over the place on 17 he got on the he got on the tee box and I would have played for seven eight yards of, of help down and off the right 
gap mm-hmm. wedge would have been perfect. It was 131 cover, 135 hole. I thought it was a perfect 125 shot. And and then like when he got over it, I'm feeling in off the right on the tee. And he wow. feels it too. And then he hits it up. And I'm watching this thing float. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, is this gonna <laughs> I thought it was gonna be one of those floaters sail, that yeah. the wind just switches and just kills it, ends up going in the water. Luckily gets on the green, hits a great putt. Um, and then of course drives it right down the middle of the fairway on 18 and got a weird bounce on that second shot. And I was right behind him on that putt on 18. I was trying to get my phone out to video it, but I'm like putter raising with him. I thought he made it and, uh, just missed, but, and then I had to do a damn interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we, I, I still have the interview to get to and chat's starting to pop off a little bit. So don't worry guys. We're you know, I see questions from in here from, Evan from Luke, uh, you know, from Jason, stuff we're all going to get to. So keep sending those in. We're keeping an eye on that. Uh, we're th- this. I got one here from Ace Maker Twelve. We're, we're thinking. We're thinking about the, 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 the what could stop. Oh. What could potentially <laughs> stop stop Scotty Scheffler this year? You know, if it's not the putter anymore, if it's it's never been the ball striking. We're listen. We're on the record. This is a podcast of two hashtag working fathers. Scotty has one on the way. Meredith has a pregnancy glow. The baby's arriving soon. He was asked about his playing schedule this year with a baby on the way in the Olympics. Um, how do we think baby's going to impact Scotty's season? Do we what? Do we have the due date on that baby? By the way, uh, I think it's TPC Craig Ranch week. Oh God. Shucks, I was really hoping to see him at TPC's Craig Ranch. Really hoping to see how that was going to go for him. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, we're we're dads here. What's I, what's I your two cents? I, I don't think <laughs> I don't think Scotty's too upset either about not having to play Byron Nelson. <laughs> I think he's really excited, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you? What uh, do you two cents on that? Um, all right, two cents. I would say. I would say, I mean, dude, it's, you know, pretty dang difficult, you know, just to, to manage, oh gosh, sleep mentally being able to go get the work done. He's a hard worker. And once your clock gets all screwed up with, with, uh, especially if they're traveling, you know, it's just really difficult, but I don't know. Well, I'm sure he's got plenty of money to get as much help as he needs to, to keep his sleep schedule. Right. But you have always, always have that feeling as a father that you're not quite um, given all in when you're when you're a, the number one player in the world. I imagine where you're feel like you're kind of letting letting the team down, but it's it's major yeah. season. <laughs> it's, it's I mean it, it's a fair point. It's like there's no there's probably no great time. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Of course, of course, Scotty's you know child in the way is the most important thing is in, in his entire world. But uh, yeah, in terms of golf season timing, it's going to be an interesting one. I, I think the quote on this that sums it up in the best way was Max Homa talking about traveling with with Lacey and and you know spending a full day at the golf course, you know playing, working, hitting the range, and then coming back and thinking, okay, finally I get to relax and recharge a little bit and get ready for tomorrow. And he walks in the door and Lacey says. Here you go. Here's Cam. You're on. You're on dad duty now. So uh, it'll be interesting. But I mean, it'll it'll be amazing. And honestly, like th- that makes me like the guy more. I mean, maybe maybe we're a little yeah. biased here coming from a father perspective. But if he takes a little bit of a dip because he's being <laughs> a great dad, like love you, dude. Like more power to you. Um, there there is there's a comment here. Jason's asked about about Xander, um, and I think it's it's a good transition point here. Um, just talking about the other the sort of the really not the chasing pack because Xander and Wyndham were in that final group. They were leading starting the day. And then Brian Harmon also in the mix as well. But I know you were with Scotty on, on Sunday. So you were focused on that group, but uh, any thoughts on, you know, just the, how you feel coming out of this, out of this weekend. If you're, if you're Xander, if you're Wyndham, if you're Brian Harmon, just, and maybe let's start with Xander. Cause that's, that's Jason's comment here. Listen, I guarantee you at the beginning of the week, if Xander said, Hey, we're going to give you 19 under. Are you going to take that? He would be like, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. So I think a step in the right direction for Xander. Um, did he not get the job done? No, but I watched him play at Bay Hill and I did not have him on my short list of guys that I thought were going to win this week. I didn't 
necessarily like the form that he was in. He was really in technique mode. Didn't feel like he had uh, the stuff that him and Chris Como, what they were working on, really engraved. So I, I didn't think he was going to have that great of a week. A missed cut would not have surprised me. And then he comes out and shoots 65 in first round. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe okay. he found something. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it was really cool to, to kind of see what they've been working on because I was watching him make all these rehearsals and at Bay Hill, which was not something I'm accustomed to seeing Xander do. He's not a big rehearsal guy. He kind of puts the tee in the ground, makes like just that one little backswing feel. Mm -hmm. Um, and now he's like rehearsing different spots in his swing and two things, uh, I'll, I'll touch on here is one, he's hitting it very hard. He's picked up some serious speed. That was one thing that Jordan mentioned to me while he's playing with him at Bay Hill was how hard he was hitting it. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing to keep in mind with Xanders. He's a guy that's now taking a step up and how far he's hitting the golf ball and how he's doing it with his mechanics. So last year. I think they were working on trying to get it a little less flat at the top. So they're trying to get it a little bit more steep on the mm -hmm. way back to where they can get shallow in transition. He's a guy that doesn't have a ton of wrist hinge this way at the top. It's pretty this way. Mm -hmm. I think it's owner deviation is the word. Eh, I'm not the best at this stuff, right. um, but he's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he's always been a guy that, that has a shut face and he's and he has the flexion in his in his left lead wrist. He's got this. Now, if he's getting it a little too flat on the way back, it's just it makes it really tricky at times to uh, to keep the to keep it really consistent. Um, so now getting it a little bit more across the line on the way back is the feel, and then from there he can kind of get into a little bit more shallow position out of the top, and then get into that side bend and you got to turn like crap now what about i mean Wyndham? it struck me as he he kind of came out of saturday and said hey didn't necessarily have my a game today kind of lost focus in some spots but hoping to kind of get it back together and and play well on sunday it struck me as you know from more of a layman's perspective that he maybe didn't have his a game again on sunday kind of had some loose shots i think both he and xander on the back nine Missed right off the tee a number of times. Um, could have, could have been win. Could have been a huge factor there. But I thought, I thought Wyndham did a great job of kind of scrapping it around and and getting giving himself a chance to to go to a playoff in this tournament, and maybe win. Um, what do you make of you? I think this was last week you were talking about because it was it was a solo second finish. He's impressive, think, dude. Yeah. He's really I mean, impressive. Big game hunter. Brooks Kepka vibes. Like, are, are we? I mean, I He's feel impressive. like it might. It, it could be. This is not to rule out Rory or others, but like it could be a, a Rory and I mean a Scotty and Wyndham duel over a lot of these majors this year. You know, last year, uh, who was the guy that kind of made himself um, known that he was going to be a big game hunter? It was Victor Hovland. Like he was the guy that yeah. that kind of stepped up and said, "I'm going to be the dude this year." And coming into the year, I, I was trying to figure out who that was going to be. And it's turned out it's going to be Wyndham Clark. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that has stepped up and, and has played some incredible golf. Uh, it's it's really fun to watch him play because he hits it. You know, he's a low 190s ball speed guy when he wants it, mid 190s too at times. It's insane how far he hits the golf ball. He's got a great short game. And I mentioned this last week. He reminds me of Brooks Kepka in the way in which he carries himself. He's got that swagger, exactly what you want from a big, big dude um, that, that had, he taught, he basically backs up his play with, with his words. And Oh, smile. You there? Hello? Yeah. Am I, am I, uh, this is, look me at there? this. No, well, we kind of lost you at the end here, and I'm not sure what came through on YouTube or not. Maybe the chat will tell us. But this is look at this is our first live technical difficulties. How about that? <laughs> I tell you, here this is this is good. We're we're bookmarking this. Uh, things to work on for next live stream. Uh, your internet connection. So this is good for me as a producer. I get to, I get oh. to work on that. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you think that has anything to do with like being like on a live stream versus just when we normally record? I think so. Like uh, I think an, so. I'm not an internet guy. You're not an internet guy. I mean, like to really, to really. Oh, look at this. We have Cody McBride from No Laying Up in the chat. What's up, Cody? He says Ethernet cord. <laughs> and Cody, producer to producer, I agree. I agree. If we could get you hardwired, 
I think that could go a long way to stabilizing your connection. So thank you, Cody. We appreciate you. I need to like go to like this a school of technology to figure out all my stuff. Uh thank this you. This is good. We have to we have to <laughs> figure out we have to figure out what doesn't work so we can figure out how to make it work. And so this is we're all figuring this out together. I got a <laughs> few other uh Garrett Clemens in the chat says JT posted by a million. Garrett salute you. JT North Car- Gear, North oh, Carolina Hoblin. boy. Oh, Slayton talking about. Can we get into Hovland? Yeah, I, I will. Lo- that's where I was going to go next. Was just you know you touched on Hovland a little bit coming into this year, and I think it's a fair question. How do you go from one of the top five players in the world not long ago to this? Like, is it a swing coach thing? I mean, I, I was watching. I think I was. You know, we were doing some feature groups coverage for um, PJ Tour Radio on Thursday morning. I want to say it was. And man, he looked frustrated. Just was not happy with the way he was hitting the golf ball. Um, where are you at with with Vic right now? So in talking with Victor, he's very, very frustrated just mm-hmm. looking at because he's a guy that just went from competing at every single event last year and showing up this week. He just didn't look like a guy that was ready to be in contention. I think he believes in what he's working on, um, but I don't think he's there yet. I think he did, he's he been putting in a ton of reps. Um, the one thing I noticed stats wise the ball striking is something that he's been working so hard on, changed some things in his calling. And what it's done, Charlie, it's totally screwed up his chipping. Uh. So his chipping, I saw he lost like six or seven strokes um, around the green last week, which is something that we were like, oh, can't wait to see Victor Hovland show up at these big time events. And especially early part of last year, he didn't get them done, but this year like oh he's gonna win these now because he has a short game and now he shows up and his short game is totally lost and it's just crazy to 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 think about finishing the year with him you're like okay he's gonna win two majors next year or he's gonna win mm-hmm. the players and you know what we've seen is just a guy that's that likes to fiddle right he mm-hmm. he's a he's a guy that likes to change things he wants to continue to get perfection in golf and sometimes if it ain't broke don't fix it you know what i mean yeah and and i think this came from the nbc or golf channel podcast i mean uh, broadcast rather this is a podcast uh where they were just discussing the switch to grant weight and they grant weights a really perfectionist type of coach or a really kind of technical coach and um you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm sure fantastic, but I wonder if if he's a fiddler and Grant is the way he is, if that matchup is going to work long term and maybe it could, maybe it's just going to take time. But, you know, just something to, to I mean, we're talking about swing coaches here and whether they match up. And so so we'll see with Vic. Uh, I want to kind of get back to Scotty a little bit because uh, I want to I want to get into the the mechanic. We're, we have some questions. Luke has a question about broadcasting and as, as an entry point to that. Just walk us through the that that interview on the range and just where, where we were at nerves wise heading into that and and how that came about because I, I love that so much where you're you falling around Scotty all day and then you find out like oh hey yeah you're gonna do the winners interview. <laughs> it was a perfect day of of golf and I'm just sitting there kind of waiting for like if Scotty's gonna be a playoff or not and I'm near the range. And all of a sudden I hear in my, my ear, my producer says, Smiley, where are you? I'm like, by the range. And he's like, okay, Damon stuff doesn't stretch all the way to the range. His, his equipment, you're going to have to do the interview. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the interview. It's like, we just had a perfect day of golf. Why are we going to let SK go out there and completely botch the interview? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like calling together everyone to try to figure out all right what do i need to ask the guy and i'm now got my notes app out and i'm trying to figure out what i'm going to ask him and uh luckily we we came up with three questions and i i like right before i'm like oh my god this this we can do this but it was like a (laughs) you know i'm not a seasoned interviewer like for the (laughs) for a big big time event i I can interview on on Friday in Jackson. Yeah, that's great, you know. But Sunday at Players <laughs> Championship, like one of the best events we've had in a long time. We're gonna send SK out there for the big time interview. It's like, what are we doing? <laughs> um, but it luckily we were able to uh, right the ship and be able to uh, steady our nerves and 
and get through it without any big stumbles. So that was, I didn't, like, I looked back, I was like, oh, I could have asked it this way. It's like, no, dude, you got through the interview. Like, that's all you needed to do. <laughs> and, and, and most importantly, of your, of your three questions, one got a good question response. Very big, very big to note that if you get a good question, you're doing something right. Uh, you, you, you had another. I blacked a- out. I have no <laughs> idea what he said. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, I, I was, I, dude. I was just like, I was like, what? All right, how am I saying the next? What are we gonna ask next? He could have literally <laughs> said, "Smiley, you are the biggest idiot in the world. I hate you. Okay, you're the great. worst. Oh, thanks. You're the worst. <laughs> you're, you're such a bet. You're so bad at your job." And I would have been, and then I would. The next question I would have asked would have been. Back to back champion, Scotty. How did that? <laughs> you know, like that's like my brain was in to the next question. I was never ever like, and that's one thing you're supposed to do is is listen. Listen when, right. when you are giving interviews. That's the most important thing to do. And I was listening to an extent, but I was so trying to make sure I had the wording right for the next question. <laughs> You had your three, you were going to get them off, and it worked out well. Uh, you said we were talking a little bit. The, Scotty's whole out on four. You were falling around there. You had a good story about that? Yeah. So two things. So one, we weren't there live, so I didn't get to call the shot. But as soon as he hit it, like when it was in the air, I was like, this is going in. And of course it goes in. So I'm like, so that's the second one of the day where I was like, man, I would have said this, this looks really like special or something like that. I would have had a nice call. Uh, but then later in the day, I talked to his dad, Scott, and on the 10th hole, he came up to me, he said, you know, before Scotty hit that shot on four, I said, he's going to make this. So there's, there was good vibes all around. The camp. I even talked to Scotty before the day and he's got, you know, the nice St. Patty's kind of, olive-ish green pants on to uh-huh. start the day i was like dude way to love the outfit to you know for the saint patty's theme he's like yeah i showed up out here today and i had no idea it was saint patty's day <laughs> so it was a very lucky lucky day for the Sheffler camp that that's amazing uh because as you're saying that now i just realized i i, I this happens to me every single year i just forget that it's saint patrick's day i'm not irish you know i love it great holiday i just i don't i don't i forget about it and i'm like looking into my camera now i'm like oh i wore a green polo today so you know good good job uh, I'm, I'm on the scotty train like no clue got the color in happy saint Pat- happy belated saint patrick's day to everybody out there um and, th- and then of course on the broadcast topic too yeah like, yeah yeah uh, um, on the broadcast topic to uh, Fridays with Smiley, another A plus installation of Fridays with Smiley. Out of the seventeenth hole, Kiz, Keith Mitchell, Brian Harmon, uh, like <laughs> that Keith Mitchell highlight, uh, the the driver slam and the and the the horn blowing, like one of my top ten favorite golf <laughs> highlights I I can recall in, in recent memory. Um, just what were your highlights from that? And just I mean, this has been quite a run on the Florida swing now. Is it? I know we're, you know, you have a couple of weeks. It's going to change a little bit the broadcast schedule, and, and we have a question from Luke here about, you know, just working together between NBC and CBS. I know you have some upcoming work at the Masters where you're going to kind of get to be able to see both sides of that. So maybe just, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about your highlights from Fridays with Smiley and the upcoming schedule, what we're going to see coming coming uh, in the future from of of that. Uh, yeah, I mean. I thought uh, Keith Keith was great. You know, he the the video you were talking about was great. You know, so for good. for him to kind of talk about him walking from the fifth tee all the way to the clubhouse while it was raining, just so mad. It's, it's the most relatable thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> but he was great. You know, I always thought that that Keith could be somebody whenever he finishes his career or whenever he wants to get into TV. I've always thought that Keith has the personality and the insight to be uh, fantastic in TV. And he gave us some great stuff for us to be able to kind of use on the weekend as well. Um, So kudos to Keith for coming by. And then Brian Harmon, here's a guy that, um, you know, Kizer knows Brian very well. And I would say Harmonized relationship goes, you know, I just don't know him quite as well, but Mm. I really felt like he opened up on the telecast. He, you know, he's just a dude that I felt like you can just hang around and drink, drink beer with and hang out with. And that was kind of the vibe that he gave on the set that day. And, he, and 
and really some intelligent stuff when it comes to the golf course and, and how the course was playing as far as the firmness and the different wind directions and how that affects the uh, the green. So there were some things that he mentioned um, that I thought were great. He also had played with Wyndham Clark, so he was able to give us some insight on how well Wyndham was playing. Um, and it, at the time, we're like, oh, cool, you shut 65, you know, you're, you're kind of in it. And then he goes and does it um, and shoots 64 the next day. You're like, okay, like we might, this could be like the Smiley Show bump with, with Jake Knapp. Brian Harmon coming on Fridays with Smiley, and then he wins the Players' Championship. Now we're going to have Tiger Woods coming Multiple on bumps. the show because he's like, <laughs> I need the bump. <laughs> he has to. Um, you know, and just kind of to tie a knot on the Fridays with Smiley thing, I, I do think it's a bit of, of a work in progress to try to figure out the perfect balance of, of how long we're, we want to be on there. Um, how many pros we want to bring in trying to still work out on where's like the perfect amount um to where it doesn't take away from the broadcast because we want people to to come to this segment and knowing that they're going to have a good time laugh have some fun and then learn some stuff from the players it's broadcaster or broadcast television watchers who probably watch uh are the ones who get on twitter and say oh I, I you don't watch the golf you know you don't watch the golf on mute or you don't watch your football on mute like those are the type of people i'm like what do you mean like who watches anything on mute that's such a weird thing to to do or say <laughs> you know well i mean and, and if that's how you're gonna do it you know i i think that we're we're serving different audiences like if you're if you're really just here to yeah. watch the golf you're probably going to watch like a featured group on, on PGA tour live, or you're like, you just, you're, you're there just to see golf shots, golf shots, golf shots, golf shots, no commercial interruption. And so that's the kind of, that's the issue I take with some of the criticism we saw. And, and, you know, there, I, I I'd say that the, the, the reception of this has been like 98% positive, but there are a few people that are saying, I don't, I don't like it. And, and I also have, issues yeah, with I that. get that. Well, I, I, I get that. And I understand that, you know, everyone has different preferences and you're allowed to have different preferences, but you know, what have we asked from, and I, I'm not on NBC universal payroll, you know I mean? Yeah. I have a vested interest in seeing you do well. And I think that's awesome. And it's great for the show, but at the same time, it's like we, you know, there's been a big ask from golf fans for NBC sports and golf channel to try some new stuff. And all I saw out of this, out of, you know, feedback in this broadcast this week was how much people enjoyed it and how much people felt like it, it matched, the event, you know, the live from coverage was hilarious. I, I mean, every single day, Johnson Wagner is sending Johnson Wagner out on these like, you know, investigative journalist sort of missions to throw golf balls off a bank to assess where Rory's ball landed and hit balls, you know, from the drop zone on 70. I thought it was fantastic. And so I think it's, you know, if we're going to say, hey, try stuff and be different and, and then that happens, you know, it's kind of hard to also say, oh, you know, it, it's it's not to my liking. So. I, I, I loved it. Uh, I realize that doesn't represent everyone, but uh, it was fun to see. And uh, yeah, now, now the, the combo bump, <laughs> we got a little, we got a little pod bump. We got a little fries, a smiley bump. Um, so we, we got a, a few in here to, to get to, we got, you know, Jake uh, Prevet asking here, you know, and, and, and obviously take a pass on this one if you want to, cause I know that, you know, Ricky's a close friend, but did you, did you see the incident on the tee where he, he had a fan sort of interrupt and take a picture in his backswing? <laughs> You, you. <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm sure Ricky didn't think it was hilarious. Dude, I thought it was like hilarious. Ricky. It sounded like a, <laughs> it sounded like a demon came out of him when he said you. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I've never like heard Ricky get confrontational, so I've never heard like mean Ricky voice. But uh, I, I don't know the backstory behind it. To be honest, I, I, I'd heard a rumor that the guy was doing it for a couple holes and oh, I wow. guess the only thing to monitor with stuff like this is that if 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 gambling or or betting continues to grow um that's something that you may see uh happen yeah. in a live sporting event that that fans have you know a, a not a say but a very loud say if you will um to try to have an effect on the outcome and that's something that you can't really do anything about um but so that's just something to monitor um if if, if gambling and golf be oh did we lose you okay hold on we are a second technical difficulty okay you're back we're back we're all the way back um 
Yeah, I, I think that that's that's a, a really good point to make on the gambling thing. And and I, you know, I, I saw the same highlight on social that everyone else saw where it was like, you know, some people in the comment. It, 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 that's a whole other tangent I could go on trying to figure out uh, the backstory on something in today's day and age through the comments. Like, good luck to you. Like people were like, oh, it was a camera shutter. It was this and that. Like, I don't know what it was, but if it was indeed like someone, you know, I think it was a while back where someone was talking in during Max Homa's putt because he had like a $3 bet or something like that. Like that stuff where we haven't mm. necessarily seen like a huge flashpoint incident, but as you know, shoot, I'm in a state where they just legalized gambling this last week. And it's a whole another you know world of opportunity for people. If that's seeping its way into golf tournaments. Yeah. Like that's, that's not great. So um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a uh, you know, tough one to see for Ricky, but um, uh, so let, where should we, the, the other one, I kind of want to touch on it so as we kind of move away from the players. I mean, I, do you have any other kind of big picture thoughts on certain players, things you want to talk about? Because I thought Rory's comments about the meeting that's happening, I guess, today, right now in the Bahamas is a big one, but wanted to, you know, live produce this thing and give you the opportunity to kind of tie yeah. in loose ends if you wanted to. Yeah, I think the the one thing I'll, I'll just say about the players <clears throat> and I just had this I don't know, just walking the grounds of that place, TPC Sawgrass and just what they've done to this event and how much they've cleared trees out, how perfect the grass is from wall to wall, the pine straw. I'm telling you, this place reminds me of Augusta. Augusta National and the Masters will always be the best place to go and watch a golf tournament. Dude, number two is is the players, and it's to me, it's wow. not even close. I mean, I, I I would say that the Ryder Cup's kind of in a different category, like a team type thing, because I would put Ryder Cup above the Masters, honestly, because I think it's that much fun. Looking to go watch golf, it's it's such a cool golf course with an exciting finish. You're not get you're every hole that you go to, you're gonna have a a great vantage point. And so spec from a spectating standpoint, it's fantastic. And from a player side and just the how good the golf course is and just the little things that they do around the place to kind of give it a Augusta national feel and how they trim the uh, the fairways to how they trim some tee boxes. It reminds me a little bit of Augusta national. And, and I'd, I, it's so weird to say that for a course in Jackson or Ponte Vedra compared to Augusta, but still, I think they've done a fantastic job of making this 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 tournament feel as big as as what they have always said they wanted it to be, which is a major, the fifth major, the most important event for the PGA Tour. And and to me, it 100% represents that based on the style, of course, how good it is, and then also the fans being able to have a great time too. I've never been and never have I had – greater FOMO than this entire week, you know, just watching, you know, early coverage on Thursday and Friday and then heading into the weekend. I, it's just like, man, this place looks and, and, and it benefited from obviously the storylines of the week and the excitement of the tournament and, and wanting to be in a place where action was mm. happening. But to your point, it, it, it just was the whole presentation and the whole package. And that's where I think it folds back into, you know, uh, NBC and, and, and golf channel doing a fantastic job. Bless you. Uh, that was a little delayed. Bless you there. Got some uh, <laughs> live, little, little live podcast action. But yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I think, you know, it, it, it is it is definitely um, and, and I love that it has it's, you know, not that it hasn't previously had its own identity, but I love this. this I, you know, where we're taking it, where it's like, yeah, you know, it's you, you, you can talk about it being a fifth major, but it's almost like this distinct entity where it just has this this juice and this investment from the players playing in it because it's their tournament that is just different from any other week of the year, really majors included. So, um, yeah, awesome stuff. And like, hey, that's, let me get your take list. on yeah. this. So you, you just watched the players, 144 guys in a cut. And then you watch Bay Hill, which was 70 dudes in a cut from a, from just a fan watching on TV what was the difference between the leaderboards? Did they look different to you at all in, let's say, Bay Hill or any other signature event? 
that this is a really interesting one because I think it was Dylan Wu who tweeted uh, after the event where he was saying, "Hey, you know, look at how look at how great this tournament was with a full field and a cut, and you know, don't forget about us small guys because we can make for a good tournament." So I, I hear that on the one hand, and and I you know I think it's it's fair and and it's it definitely added to the atmosphere. I mean, I think selfishly too, I love tournaments where I can like wake up, roll out of bed, put on PGA Tour Live and watch until the sun goes down. It's awesome. Uh, now, if we're going to be fair, if we're going to just, you know, put the information out on both sides, the highest finish by a non-signature event guy was Maverick McNeely T9. So, you know, if you're talking about the quality of the field and, and, and where guys ended up, it's like, you know, you still have the same names at the top. Now, with that said, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, a, a fuller field could have also contributed to pushing some of those signature event guys a little more to have to put up a better score and have to keep chasing, you know, the leaders. And, and, and you know, mm -hmm. even though they didn't mm -hmm. arrive in the top, you know, 20, top 10, it, it made a, you know, made that leaderboard on Sunday a lot more interesting because guys were chasing a higher score and trying to get away from the pack. And all of a sudden you get four marquee names, you know, at the top of the board all going for it on a Sunday. So I think it's, um, I think it's an interesting one. And I think, I think really it's like all these events, if I'm the tour, I, I'm looking at everything that happened this weekend and what a smashing success it seemed to be across the board. And, and, and as we develop the schedule for 2025 and look forward at the future of signature events, I'm saying, okay, that's information. Like that's information to take and say, how can we try to trickle this down to our other events in a way that, recapture some of that excitement and i'm and i'm sure they'll do that so that, that'd be that'd be uh my two cents on that topic i i guess like just the thing is about the players it's it's it is the pga tour's biggest event for the members it's you know it's their grandest stage and they say hey we want to have 144 dudes playing in it our best field but then for the signature events they're like you know what we're just going to cut that in half. And it just, it's weird, yeah. right? I, I, I'm for, I'm for some type of smaller compressed uh, leaderboard to where it's not as easy to keep your card and some type of relegation stuff. I am for that. Now, to how, how many guys is that? I, I don't know. Um, kind of like, like what Rory and, and Wyndham have been talking about, you know, just a hundred dudes. I'm not against it. Um, I I definitely I definitely see that adding another 44 guys that yeah I, I could see 20 of those dudes finishing top finding their way in the top 10 if they have a good week. So yes, can they compete? Do I think it needs to be tighter for the membership just because of all the different playing opportunities of how like how wide and spread out the a PGA Tour card is right now with DP World Tour. Now you got guys from Q School, Corn Ferry guys. I just want guys when they get to the tour, like they're there. Like they don't mm -hmm. have to worry about a playing schedule. You know, that's I think the biggest problem right now. There's too many cards because of there's just not enough events. And and it and that's kind of funny to say it's not enough events, but guys keep playing. They're not taking weeks off. They're gonna continue to play um because it's so cutthroat to get top 50. Well, and so I'll take that and I'll, I'll attempt to do a, a, a very convoluted segue here because I think this segue it <laughs> it's, it sort of dovetails, though, because, you know, we're we heard this week we heard uh, Peter Malnati on Saturday talk about this. We heard Roy McElroy on Sunday talk about this of, you know, just this meeting that's happening on Monday. And, you know, uh, Peter specifically spoke to how do we bring live players back in the ecosystem because i think that was the other thing we talked about heading into this week is like if we're going to call the players championship the best field in golf can we do so without some of the marquee names that are on live that are some of the best players in the world and i mean shoot i leave this weekend i'm like i didn't i didn't need any live players there this weekend to enjoy it you know like i enjoyed about as much as i possibly could have maybe another live guy on the leaderboard could have had some intrigue but that was fantastic um that having been said you know, this is going to be a thing that needs to be figured out. And I think Peter Malnati saying that, I don't know if we're just going to let them right back on the tour and just hand them their cards right back. You know, whereas Rory maybe has said, um, you know, to be fair to Peter, you know, he acknowledges Rory says, hey, we need the best players in the world playing these things. And and so, 
you know, your thoughts on just what we've heard reported around today's meeting. You know, Rory had some comments about, you know, I've spent some time with with Yasser and I think maybe you know, the people on live, Greg Norman, namely, has misrepresented who he is as a human being and what he can do for the game of golf. Um, are you expecting anything big to come out of this meeting? Uh, you know, that's happening, I guess, maybe even right now in the Bahamas. Uh, it's good that they're meeting, right? I think that's a step in the right direction. You know, um, for the longest time, I thought that these two sides have been talking. Then we find out, you know, however many months later, six months later, that they haven't had any communication since the June 6th framework agreement was proposed. So, um, I, I think that the tour and, uh, the policy board probably feels pretty solid about showing up with with a little bit of leverage uh, i think both sides probably feel that they have a little bit of that but coming off the players championship where it's the best week that the tours had in a long time they have the ssg agreement they have a general idea of what it takes maybe for um for these players to come back um from everything i've heard and talked to to your point these, these players are not going to just be gifted uh, playing opportunities they're going to have to earn their way back um, and some of these players you know the the, the five or six guys that you want to have come play yeah they'll be given opportunities but they also have to play well I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to be a hey you you have x number of starts forever I think it's they have to go and earn their way back um, and the equity uh, component that that Peter Malnati mentioned yes. Charlie I think is something that that is is sticks out kind of like a sore thumb of okay, this is their pathway back. It's like, all right, you're, you don't have any, any, any equity in this, this new PJ tour, um, public deal. Yeah. I think it's interesting to see like, you know, the, the chips that are at the table and how they're being slid around and moved around. It's like, okay, you know, if you want, you know, playing opportunities right away, like you're definitely not going to get the equity. Like we're taking, you know, that's not going to be, you, you chose to resign your membership on this tour and go leave for a competitor tour. Um, and I think that's fair. I mean, you know, I don't know how this thing shakes out in the future or, or if you get to a point where because just, you know, we've talked about this on a number of occasions, just as complicated um, as it is trying to figure out, you know, if, you know, let's say a John Rom comes back and it's like you can't have this equity initially because you, you signed for three hundred million dollars or whatever it was, um, you know, but can you can you get it back over time with 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 you know, years of service back to the PGA Tour? I don't know just as much as I have questions about that, it's like, okay, so how are we giving like a Gordon Sargent equity, you know, showing up on the tour or whoever comes after, after oh, Gordon yeah. Sargent, you know? And so I think, you know, I have a lot of questions about just the, the whole <laughs> future business structure of the tour that I don't know if I can answer them. I don't know if you can answer them, but I mean, I think this whole I thing think ongoing. I think these players have questions too. Yeah. They definitely yeah, that was... have questions as well. And I mean, I, I just like think about, I mean, you were watching it yesterday, the players, I mean, it, it had to look amazing on TV. Everybody just kind of so raved good. about how how great it looked on TV and how how competitive it was. And it just makes me think: Do you think John Rahm was watching yesterday? Do you think Brooks Kepka was watching? It's a great question. You got to think. I mean, I, I would say yes to John Rahm, no for Brooks Kepka. I don't think Brooks Kepka watches golf. He's not playing it. <laughs> um, I mean, everything I've heard, man, is that that Brooks has been the guy that's wanted to be back the most. Oh, and yeah, I've heard that from a lot of different a lot of different sources that that Brooks is the one guy that 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 wants to come back and play. Uh, you've heard other guys kind of mention it as well um, to a to a degree. Some guys have no have no desire to come back. And that's fine um, because I think there is a, a place in the game for this team thing. But I, I don't know. I, I I just think that John Rahm not not hanging around like everything about yesterday and the competitive atmosphere that that TBC Sawgrass had at the players was what John Rom lives for. I, I don't mm -hmm. think money, I don't think money and how much he got paid could ever satisfy him to the level of him being in the, in the hunt yesterday in a, in a big time professional event at like the players. I think if he was watching, I think he was as mad and as frustrated to not be there um, and, and he could be very happy of how much money he made, but I'm telling you, there's no way knowing how competitive that guy is that, that he wasn't a little bit annoyed that he wasn't playing. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would think, you know, and 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 maybe I should kind of restate my position. Like Brooks, he's he's a major guy. We know that, and this feels like a major. So maybe he was kind of tuned in, hoping to kind of see what was going to happen at, at a marquee event. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I mean, I I think that they all made a decision, and and you know, I think it's it's tough to strike a balance on this because it's not like. Um, it's like we hate live and it's not like we we hate people who watch live like you go whatever i'm a clique guy you're a clique guy. I'm, a, I'm a wild cards guy you know i mean there were a couple <laughs> a couple live guys here uh <laughs> but you know it, it's 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 just one of those things where it, I, I think where we always come back to and it's not like it's a, a novel statement so we want to see all the best players in the world playing together and that and that is just as much a a a, a, a question or a, or a requisition of the, the pga tour to make that happen as it is for live now it's like i think both sides have to live with the consequences of the decisions they've made and for live players like you you made that decision you got to take the money that means you can't play in tour events and you don't get owgr points but there are also things that the pga tour could do and the guys like rory are using their megaphone to say we need to do to get those guys back playing in the same place because you know to, to back to where we started with this full field like Full fields with the best players in golf at venues like TPC Sawgrass are electric. Please give us more of those. It's amazing. Yeah. So entertaining. So, um, oh, you, yeah, sorry. I, I was, I was kind of get on to get on a, just a little point here about Rory. You know, he's, he has been the guy with the megaphone trying to get these two sides to come together and, Maybe he's just seen the future of of him at 60 years old, looking back, thinking, man, I spent there was like four years in the late peak of my career where these sides were like, I, I think he just has a little bit of potential perspective of I, I just don't want to waste the late peak of my career where these two sides are just being so stubborn with mm. uh, with each other. It's like, let's just get together, somehow find a solution and I think that's what he's figured out. And that's all I wanted to say is that um, I think Rory just wants to see the, the sides come together and doesn't really care how it happens. He just wants the sides to come together. And I think we all do to yeah. a degree. I think the policy board's coming around to it now. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I got, you know, as we kind of finish up the show here, a few more things, I, I got to offer our apologies because we had some swing notes videos queued up, but Given the technical arrangement right now, I feel like it's not going to come off as clean as maybe it would, it would like to. So we are definitely going to get to ba- that, get back to that in future weeks as we kind of clean up our. I'll, I'm going to get on Amazon after the show, fire Smiley some Ethernet cords and adapters, <laughs> things of that nature. I will yeah, say, yeah, my bad, my bad, uh, my bad. It hung yeah, in there, didn't it? It hung, it hung in there. We're we're still here. It looks like it's live, as far as I can see over here. Uh, I w- <laughs> I will say, swing notes update, big swing notes update. Shout out to my guy John Reno because I careered it on Friday. Oh. I shot, I shot uh, a little 34, 37, 71, hit 16 of 18 greens. Let's go. I think, I think we're getting somewhere. I think we're getting somewhere. Let's go. So I've, uh, I've played once since I've played with you. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a good spot. We're, we're going to have to get back out there uh, soon to get it back on video because now I'm like, I'm actually proud of my swing. I want to see it on video next year. Oh, swing. here we go. Here we go. <laughs> and, and, and also shout out to, to uh, on, the, on the Xander topic. I, I was able to procure an old paradigm triple diamond head that was spec for Xander. That thing is mm-hmm. hot, Smiley. We dumped mm-hmm. the old driver. We got the new driver. We're hitting it straight. We're hitting the low driven cut. It's coming out a better window. Why wouldn't you? Things are looking up, so we'll have we'll have to get we'll get an update uh, in that department uh, in, in the near future. Once we once we and, and by the way, as as you note, us playing um, that video, our first video for everyone who's watching, and, and and we'll put out a teaser in the next coming days. We're gonna premiere the front nine at Spyglass Hill on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. So everyone watching, set a little reminder. Let's we'll go. remind you in the meantime, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. I've had the pleasure of. of going through that edit with a, an awesome team over at 17th and ocean uh, who've been editing it. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. Um, one and done. Should we come back to one and done now? Should we make our Valspar picks? Yes. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm, I'm currently flipping through the field <laughs> list right now. So as mentioned, uh, I got my second win of the year. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, 750 FedEx cup points. Here's a little fun fact for you, Smiley. If I was a player on the PGA tour, I would be, and this is just through four events. This is not the whole season. I would be third on the FedEx Cup point standings. 
<laughs> I have so much. Like, if I catch you, this is going to be the most news. heroic run ever. <laughs> it uh, starts so, with picking some winners. So let me think about this. So I went, I went first. Yes, yeah, somehow you, you went first. So you just hit the goal this last week, and you got one hundred eighty-seven point five points. So you're at, he, at, if he had a good Sunday, it was it, it was right there. You know. Well, he that's was, what. I, it was funny because we were watching the top of the leaderboard, but I was watching Scotty and Sahith at 12 under. Like, this is the real matchup to watch today. The, yeah. the Smiley Show one and done. Uh, so I think it's I think it's back to me to pick first this week, right? Because it's, it's our mm-hmm. fifth week. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. And I have not, I have like just skimmed a uh, Valspar field list here. Um, you know what? All you need to know is that Sam Sam Burns is playing. <laughs> yeah i mean he's he's a killer here i i i, I should go sam and I, and I might go sam but i'm also kind of like i you know what i'm gonna do something crazy here uh i love <laughs> this guy this guy was coming off a major medical exemption showed a lot because... of form to top 10 this last week oh i know you're taking i want to kind of let you back in here a little bit uh stanford guy Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go Mad McNeely. I'm gonna go Mad McNeely just based on I think I think he's trending a little bit. I'd oh. love to see him win. Yeah. Who'd you think I was going with? Oh, okay. Uh I, I was thinking Daniel Berger. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I I, I like what I saw to Mav at the players. Uh and I think, you know, look, Valspar's a demanding test as is TPC Sawgrass. So I'm rocking with uh, Maverick McNeely this week. Okay. I love it. Um Okay, I'm going to take. Let's see. Give me Brian Harmon. Ooh, another guy's in form. Okay, there you have it. So those are our picks this week. We'll see how they pan out. Um, can I can I go back? Seems to, like a no brainer. Seems like seems like a no brainer for both of us. Both guys who showed some form at the players. Uh, can I can I go back really quick to swing notes here because. In the chat, Cody McBride, who's sticking with us all the way through, he he gave us the he gave us the hot tip on the Ethernet cord. He gave some praise to the NBC uh, Sports Golf Channel broadcast, which is much appreciated. And now he <laughs> wants a Smiley and Dew Sweeper swing update. Do we have anything on the Dew Sweeper front, Smiley, on the swing update? Any any any, any nuggets you can give Cody on uh, things I've been working on in my swing? I believe so. It, it, how do you say Tony's last name? He's the dew sweeper, right? Tony Ruggiero? Yeah, Ru- Ruggiero. Ruggiero. Yeah. I was close. Well, almost. I got a uh, I got a lesson from him at Cognizant. I feel like we you and I went over it though. Didn't we go over it that one um that one podcast? And I haven't hit a ball since, so I I, <laughs> I think I'm in a good headspace. I know what to work on. Um can you just so give Cody like I'll figure like, it out this week when I play a bunch of golf. Give give Cody like just some top line clip notes if he didn't catch up on the cognizant recap like what are we working on? okay so what we figured out was on swing catalyst i was getting my pressure in my right foot at about 80 to 85 percent on the way back so, so you could call it a bit of a like transferring too much of my weight into my right foot so we're going to try to turn a little bit more centered keep the weight and pressure a little bit more on the inside of my right foot strengthen my right hand grip and work on my take takeaway, and then from there, if I get the takeaway right, it keeps my arms connected to my turn, and then I'm able to kind of clear much better, get my left shoulder kind of going down and left versus up, and the club kind of club and handle kind of raising and going into the golf ball. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, that's that's what's working right here. We haven't really gotten to test it out there, but I Cannot did wait. get wait a new shaft. I got I got. Four new shafts built by Srixon. Uh, I got, God, I think it's Graphite X is what they are. And then some weighted Srixon heads that I'm going to throw throw on there uh, that they just sent in as well. I actually sent it to the players locker room at, at uh, the players because <laughs> Denny McCarthy sent me a text and said, hey, man, you got a package here. The locker room attendant wanted me to tell you <laughs> I feel like such a dang pro. <laughs> I was like, heck yeah, brother. I was like, I got these heads coming in. And it just might be the difference, Danny. Could be the difference. <laughs> God, I love it. Well, I cannot wait for those updates. You're, you're of course, headed on a little vacation, so you're going to play a little G 
while you're on the road. So excited to, to, yeah. to get some of those updates mm-hmm. there. Um, and then I guess the last place to kind of close up is, as, as you may or may not have seen on, on our socials today, uh, we are, we, this is the reason we're doing this on YouTube and will be for the next couple of weeks is because we are headed to a new distributor and we're excited to update you on that. And we're, and I, you know, we're looking at a, you know, a launch date before the masters. We'll, we'll kind of get some more concrete details and share those, you know, as we kind of develop that timeline. But, um, you know, I, for me personally, I'm sure you as well, and I'll let you say your piece here too, is just, you know, want to extend uh, the the most sincere appreciation and gratitude we possibly can for Sirius XM and Sirius XM PGA Tour Radio and all the people there that, you know, launched this podcast, got us started. I mean, you and I would not have met if it were not for Sirius XM uh, and, and, you know, Taylor Zarzer, Justin Ware, Jeremy Davis, those guys that run that channel do a fantastic job. So, um, you know, nothing but appreciation and gratitude for all of them and the opportunity that they created, you know, definitely for me, but for the, the two of us to do this show together. So um, big thanks to them. And, and yes, we are, you just stay tuned on the socials, go follow at the smiley show on, on X and Instagram. We'll, we'll, we'll have some exciting updates for you in, in the coming weeks, but yeah, you know, in terms of where you can find us, we'll, we'll, you know, right now stay tuned to this YouTube channel, subscribe, like, and subscribe, rate, review, do all that stuff. Um, and, and, and you'll, we'll share clips on socials as well. So I don't know, smiley, any, any comments on the impending move, uh, what we're looking forward to and just, you know, thoughts about, about, uh, just wrapping up the year, the launch year that was. Yeah, no, huge shout out to Sirius XM and that whole crew. Uh, I think you kind of put it into all the words that I would have definitely said, shouting out the right people. Taylor Zars are definitely being the guy that helped, um, help, help me get started in this and then pairing us up together as well. Um, but really excited about the YouTube stuff that's coming out that, uh, we shot over in, uh, spyglass and yeah, I think that's going to be hilarious to watch. Looking forward to watching that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is kind of the ramp up to, to the master. So I'm really pumped and also need to give a shout out as well to our DFS that looked so good early so good. that we were cashing all, like, <laughs> you were cashing all your tickets. <laughs> I've never seen the board look as good for a DFS lineup as it did on us for Thursday morning. I was like, Hey, when's Eric Van Royen tee off? I bet he's 200 through two. Boom. <laughs> it was just like, we couldn't miss early. Well, it was also the evolution of that lineup too. Like if you go back and watch our YouTube clip from last week where I I love how it worked out where we were were pulling guys in and putting guys, you know, taking guys back out and and, and kind of, you could see, and every player you mentioned was so hot to start the tournament. And then of course, you know, Friday happened. It was a little different. Uh, This is how DFS works, but that's, that's another thing that we'd love. Oh, I need to mention a couple. Yeah, please do. I need to mention a couple for DFS. I mean, you could do your lineup later. I just want to mention a couple guys up there. Because I don't know if we'll get another episode notes. out. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Um, I like SH Kim. I like Joel Damon here coming off a good week. That was really good to see him play well, by the way. I like Andrew Putnam. Uh, Sepp Straka. And Lee Hodges will be a good good course for Lee. And it's a it's a good course for Akshay. Um kind of well, Akshay's gonna break through at some point, not sure when. Hmm. Well, he's already won, but I feel like the the breakthrough that was a non opposite field. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh I'm trying to see if I see anybody else that's just like sticking out like a sore thumb uh let's just keep it at that that's kind of just like a real kind of dfs sounding lineup i I like all the guys at the top there's yeah jt is gonna have a good week so we'll see i'll 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 plug them in you know maybe maybe we'll uh we'll see if i can work something up that goes off your recommendations and get it out there for the for the people to see what our (laughs) our kind of like de facto tss my my dfs lineup is going to be this week but um yeah as you mentioned stay tuned for i mean i'm really pumped for the spyglass drops we're gonna we have front nine this week back nine next week um at probably the goat video game course so fired up for that and then i think people are gonna love the pacific grove uh muni video that will drop the the third week nine holes at, at pg muni on the back nine one of the most picturesque settings <laughs> on the monterey peninsula and we did it 
on the Sunday that they would not allow players to participate in the AT&T <laughs> Pebble Beach Pro-Am because there were 30 mile per hour winds and 60 mile per hour gusts. And we said, you know what? Uh, let's go out and play. And then hopped in the car after and our wives called us and said, hey, um, there's a shelter in place on the Monterey Peninsula. You probably should get home. <laughs> 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 oh man uh it's i can't wait to watch it um it was a fun day gonna be a lot of fun well hey thanks for sticking with us here on uh you know our first live show since the router cup reaction we're hoping to do more of these we're gonna figure out the tech stuff and we're gonna get back here soon and and interact with y'all in the chat so thanks for hanging with us today and hey rosie oh hey rosie gotta say goodbye <laughs> goodbye hey, to our rosie first making friend. a <laughs> a little cameo to end that's a, an a, appearance a perfect way to a perfect way to end the show uh thank you everyone and rosie for watching and uh we will be back here soon <laughs>